Hey guys, welcome back to dancefair.com as well as fairrealestate.com. It's been a long time since I did a book review and I've been reading lots of books. So for those of you who don't know, my New Year's resolution is to read one book a month this year in 2015. Well, I've been doing more like two books a month and I've been doing the video book reviews. So the book I just finished is What I Learned Losing a Million Dollars. Okay, and it's written by Jim Paul, who's now uh, deceased, and Brendan Moynihan. But it's about Jim Paul. Okay, Jim Paul was the guy who actually lost a million dollars. So Jim Paul basically raised in a poor family, uh, uneducated. He was the first one to go to college out of his family. Um, he was pretty smart because he learned really quickly in school, in college, uh, in the army because he went to the Vietnam War, how to get ahead and uh, how to kind of separate himself from his peers. So he did that by learning the rules of whatever he was trying to accomplish, focusing on the rules and then uh, <coughs> excelling at those things. So he wouldn't waste his time with the things that are not important. We talk about, I talk about the 80-20 rule all the time. So Jim Paul definitely did that. Um, so he got he got a pretty good job uh, after the military, um, which he was a major or something at the age of 23, which is unheard of, but he did that by focusing on the rules and what other people did to get in those positions, and he did the same thing. So he ended up being a stock trader, a stockbroker, um, and so he would trade a lot of lumber, and soybean oil futures and for those of you who don't know or who are not interested it's not important this book is not this book is excellent for people who are investing in the stock market but it's not for only for those people okay I mean I'm involved in the stock market I'm not a trader at all I'm more of a long-term investor maybe even a speculator and he gets into the different type of investors in here um, and I'm gonna talk about some of that today but he basically made a whole bunch of money in the stock market um, it basically because in his, as he put it himself he got lucky and unlike all the other times in his life prior to that where he learned how to master the rules and then just focus on the things that were important in the stock market he actually didn't do that okay he didn't follow the rules and he still made a lot of money and he says that is the reason why he lost it all. So he ends up, he ended up losing it all, and then he goes through uh, the reasons why, and he also goes through the reasons why most people lose money in the markets or in real estate or in their investments or in business or whatever it might be. So one of the things early on, one of the things I liked early on is he he studied different people who made money in the stock market. He studied Warren Buffett, he studied uh, all these other hedge fund traders, I think he mentioned about 20 of them or even more, Jim Rogers, Marty Schwartz, John Templeton, William O'Neill, uh, Peter Lynch. So he gives these quotes where all these people who made a lot of money in the stock market are contradicting each other. And he thought that was interesting and I think it's interesting too that none of them are right okay so whatever whatever they think works is what works for them to make money but uh, Jim uh, Jim Paul's conclusion is that there's almost an infinite amount of ways to make money in the stock market but only very few ways to lose money so rather than focusing on like most books do focus on how to make a million bucks um, because there's so many ways to make a million bucks in the stock market he focuses on how not to lose your money and actually these same people he quoted when they were asked about losing money all their advice sounded the same so their advice differed a lot on how to make money but when it comes to losing money they all kind of sang the same tune like Jim Rogers said my basic advice is don't lose money Marty, Sh Marty Schwartz said I'm more concerned about controlling the downside 
Learn to take the losses. The most important thing in making money is not letting your losses get out of hand. Uh, Warren Buffett, one investor's two rules of investing. Never lose money and never forget rule number one. So, hence this book. Jim Paul realized after he lost all that money that, hey, he doesn't want to repeat that again. Okay, and rather than focusing on how to make money, because there's so many ways to make money, if you focus on how not to lose money, you will do pretty good in the stock market or in business or in real estate or whatever it is that um, that it might be. So he talks about the five stages of internal loss. So one of the things I found really interesting is the psychology of people who uh, consistently lose money in the stock market or this applies to business, real estate, whatever it may be. The psychology, okay? Uh, business, investing, real estate, these are continuous processes, okay? It's not like a basketball game. And he gives that example too. A basketball game is definite. It has a definite beginning and a definite end. Business, the stock market, real estate, these are continuous processes. I talk about it all the time. Business is a 24-7, 365 uh, day a year sport that doesn't end. So if you don't learn how to control your losses, things can get out of hand really quickly. And to compound that, the fact that we, us as humans, all have similar uh, psychological uh, ways of internalizing our losses. And it's related to my next book, which I'm going to review, called How Adam Smith Can Change Your Life, which is basically how human beings are really good at deceiving ourselves. Um, so we need to keep that we need to keep our own ability to deceive ourselves away from us. And it has no place in business or investing or in the stock market. We need to be real with ourselves. If we're losing money, we need to have rules established to get out. In fact, that's what Jim Paul recommends. He says, have a plan before you invest. So what a lot of people do is they buy a stock. They don't really have a plan. They just hope it goes up. And that's it. They don't have a plan, and then they'll have a plan after they're in. But once they're in the game, they've already made a decision. They're already psychologically invested because now they don't want to take a loss because not only will they lose money, but it makes them look foolish in their eyes or in their peers' eyes. A lot of people don't like to admit that they were wrong. This is called internalizing the market. you got to treat the market just like a game. Have a plan. Say, if it goes down 10% or 20%, however much you're willing to risk beforehand, when you're more objective in thinking and not subjective, which is what we are after we've invested in a position, um, we'll make better decisions. So have your stop losses in order. Before you buy the stock, you need to tell yourself and commit it to paper. If this stock goes down 10% or 20%, whatever your number may be, you stick to that because eventually you're going to make the right decisions and it's going to go up and you can sell when, just like you had the stop losses, you have a rule in place for when you're going to sell the stock if it makes money. So you don't want to do these things after you're already invested because then your mind gets in the way and we can deceive ourselves and we can internalize and rationalize to ourselves and justify to ourselves why we're in the position that we're in. Um, we're in denial. In fact, he has the five stages of internal loss, and I'm going to wrap up here, is denial, anger, bargaining, then you go into depression, and then acceptance. So what he's saying is, skip all the other ones and go straight to acceptance. If you're losing and your hypothesis was wrong, just get out because you're only going to lose more money, and that's why he lost a million bucks. So I really like this book a lot. It talks a lot about the differences between inherent risk and created risk. So an inherent risk is a natural occurrence in both markets which are unorganized or organized. Created risks involves arbitrary invention of potential monetary loss. So created risk is like a roulette wheel that could be spun, the football game could be played, horse race could be won or lost without money being involved. Those things are just happening and they're not continuous processes they have a beginning and an end inherent risk is what we're all in business people entrepreneurs investors really good book we can learn a lot more about ourselves our minds um, and how to keep our money okay so there's so many ways to make money and there's surprisingly so 
a few ways that we can possibly avoid losing money. So we need to learn our psychology, we need to learn the ways that we think and that we trick ourselves into staying with a loss longer than we should and we end up losing money. So there's a million ways to make money and a few ways to lose it and most people lose it by the things in this book that we just talked about. So definitely check it out. What I learned losing a million dollars, it really hit home because uh, for a lot of the time in my early career as a business person, I, it seemed like I had the golden touch, I can do no wrong, and then I got into some bad business uh, situations and I was internalizing my losses and thankfully I was able to get out of those situations, but I could have gotten out a lot quicker had I read this book and known about cutting my losses uh, before they got out of hand. Definitely check it out. It could probably save you from a lot of heartache later on in life. A lot of ways to make money, a lot of books on how to make a million bucks, very few ways to actually lose a million bucks, um, and no books written on how to lose your money and how this guy lost a million bucks. So what I learned losing a million dollars out of 10, I give this a 10. Okay, and it's a quick read. It's only 160 some pages. So definitely pick it up, 10 out of 10. Uh, dancefera.com, sferarealestate.com. Take care.